yes, it is me once again. Um, welcome to the Cannabis Coffee Hour. I'm your host, uh, your MC, and the place to be, and the place to be is uh, with me and a little bit of cannabis, a little bit of coffee. It's about an hour. I know not every episode is an hour, but it's usually up there. It's usually, uh, I try to hit like 45 minutes. Sometimes I'm running and gunning. Last night I was running and gunning. I just got, I just did a co- uh, comedy show last night in, down, <laughs> in fucking Times Square at the Cookies uh, store. Shout out to uh, Lost Colony Cannabis and Cookies NYC. They had a great comedy show and involved me. (laughs) And it was the place to be, man. That was funky fresh. Uh, That was a great show. I was, I was, because they don't sell cannabis at the cookie store. You know, the cookies brand, if you don't know cannabis, I mean, cookies kind of popped off in the last five years super big. First, it was just like kind of a strain, but the dude, Burner, um, got a hold of it and copyrighted. I think he was the dude that came up with it. I think it came from Humboldt. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I, you, you know, you know me. I'm not a super comedy. I'm not a super uh, weed nerd, and I'm not a super comedy nerd. I run on vibes. So sometimes my stats and specifics may be uh, a bit off kilter. But with the cookies, it was just like this uh, strain that popped off. But then he kind of really capitalized on it. Probably did a billion. Um, songs. He was just putting out so much great hip hop. Um, yeah, Burner's interesting, man. Uh, I definitely would love to have him on this podcast. Um, just because he comes up from the Bay Area and his uh, rap style, his hip hop style is all Bay Area. Speaking of hip hop style, and then the dude Nems, um, Bing Bong was in the house. Uh, this rapper, he did a little bit of time with the MC of the comedy show, Cookie's Comedy Show. Um, they had an MC who, uh, forgot my name. <laughs> he messed up my intro, but, uh, yeah, he's my buddy, Matt. Uh, he's Funky Fresh. Shout out to Matt. Um, and shout out to all the comics. Reggie Conquest was there last night. I hung with, I hung with all these comics in the stairwell and smoked J's after the show. The show was good. I went up first. Um, the crowd was hot, man. It was like right at, you know, right at Times Square. I'm looking over and I've done so many shows over the years in Times Square. I came to New York in 2005. I remember I was talking uh, to a man and he was like to Reggie Conquest the other night. And I was just like saying, dude, Caroline's was such a big deal for me when I played Caroline's. It was like and that shit closed down. But what was cool was like this was right down the block from Caroline's. And at least it was packed. Sometimes you go to like shows in Times Square that wasn't t- Caroline's and it would be terrible. Because Times Square is a little like touristy and funky. But Caroline's was always on time. Um, not always, but when it was when it was packed, it was like you got a slice of all of America. Like it was literally the middle of America. And that's where it was last night. Super New York last night. Um, and it showed up, man. And nothing popped off. That's what I love about these cannabis shows. Like they're a little bit sleepy, you know, it gets a little bit foggy. Um, but uh, nothing ever really pops off. And nobody was drinking mad heavy because it was just like a store. And I was really impressed by Cookies NYC by their merch game. Like they just got great sweatshirts and uh, great rolling stuff. And But no cannabis as of yet. Um, because I do know the way New York is rolling out um, legalization of cannabis is really grassroots. Like that shout out to the housing works. Like I think they were one of the first. There's a couple other... Um, businesses and divisions within the government, I guess, uh, and their relationships with businesses that get like the first bounty of cannabis stores. So they're ro- the official ones, but the other ones are all over the place. This this was kind of a hybrid last night. It was more of a production company, and then there was just a lot of herb people. Uh, kind of sewers and uh, movers and shakers, um, but it was a it was a dope scene. 
uh, playing, you know, a lot of hip hop, a lot of reggae, a lot of, uh, yeah, there was definitely a Puerto Rican influence there. Last, It was just very New York. It was just like black, white, Puerto Rican, Jewish, uh, everybody, man. Everybody was um, smoking herb and doing comedy last night. And it was rainy and cold. It was like the night you did not want to go out. And this show was sold out. It's been sold out for um, a week. So shout out to the uh, Cookies NYC. Um, that was so much freaking fun. There was definitely a hip hop vibe to it, and that's what I loved about it. That dude Nems is a great rapper, man. I've listened to his stuff, um, and uh, he's been in New York. To be a rapper from New York, you gotta be like super good and super aggressive because everybody's gonna want to take you out. Um, but there's a lot of good rappers out there. Um, but you could check out my rap album. <laughs> Why am I talking about other cats? Um, you talk about other cats' influences. I guess you want to inspire. Uh, you want to go towards things that inspire you. And that's why you want to look towards greatness and look towards, like, that's what I like about good music. Like, it, it, it kind of, like, when you get on that higher frequency, you know, when you hear good music. Or laughter, like. Dude, I mean, everybody was tripping out and laughing last night. All I did was have good times. So my body's like, it was a little bit, you know, I didn't drink, but I'm worn out from the good times. <laughs> and it was rainy, and I was playing it safe, you know. I was just like, it's rainy and cold, so the move is just like, you kind of are extra mindful of your own zone, you know been uh good with meditating but i couldn't make the 20 minutes i broke it like eight i think i just got so much going on and then i was thinking about doing this podcast and it's been a mi minute from doing my own solo podcast shout out to uh matt cough i hope you guys enjoyed that episode check it out on youtube the full video we'll be doing more full videos produced right you know i step up the game just a little bit this is my own in-house company you know i shot this off my phone i record this i edited it i do everything this is one man's shop the cannabis coffee hour but that's what i kind of like about it and i've learned so much last night i want to do more like mixtape like little shots here and there as i go through the week and do shows like i had the opportunity to um interview a bunch of cool dudes last night but my, I had the mics, but I didn't, like, present it right. And I didn't, uh, it, and everybody's just, like, smoking in a stairway. So there was my, there was the moment where I could have done it, and then it kind of got, it went. And so then I just let it just, like, settle. And then I was like, ah, I'm not going to record. I'll just do a solo one tomorrow um, and just talk about it. <laughs> and here we are. It all works out. I'll definitely get some of these cats on the podcast very very soon and another thing was uh i got a great a uh great 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 great, great gift bag from the i want to make sure i'm pronouncing everything they were everybody was just so dope last night it was just a fun cool scene and i know they're doing more shows shout out to matt richards that's who the cat um The Cookie Show, Billy June 88 was the production. That cat is everywhere. Like, he's been on Hot 97. Like, this was kind of like, he produced all this Hot 97 stuff. Um, so he's kind of classic hip-hop, um, New York. But it was just a good, good, cool, fucking dope scene. Oh, yeah, what I was trying to do. Let's see what I was trying to do. Let's give a shout out to the organizers. Billy June was like one of the producers. And he's done a lot of comedy shows and podcasts. This is the Lost Canna Club. Woman-owned legacy operator comedy and cannabis. Um, they produce comedy shows. And um, it's very herb-friendly. 
and the rapper Nems have been showing up. So it's kind of like this cool scene. Um, it was definitely super, super um, dope. I appreciate being on the show. The gift bag was amazing. I got some greater shout out to Big Apple Rolling Papers. I got a great lighter. Uh, my other friend <laughs> stole my lighter. He didn't steal I, g- I gave it to him a couple times while we were hanging out. And then he went on stage. And then after the show, everybody broke out. So I missed him. And then I was just all of a sudden, I was back on the subway heading home. Um, but I did, I never hang out. But this show, I hung out. Um, and it was chill. Like, I'm trying to go towards vibes that feel good. And last night was a good one. Um, And make work fun, you know. I've been reading a lot of, like, meditation stuff. And when you get to your true essence, it's like, everything should be fun. Like, I just had to take my hat off. The weather's weird here. It's like rainy and um cold but now the sun is coming out (laughs) so it's like huh um it's a little bit all over the map here it hasn't snowed in new york but it's definitely cold i never complain i mean uh you just gotta grin and bear it at this point and uh i can't complain i've been working Um, Right now, I need to get a a few more dates. There's stuff going to be up on the calendar soon. But that was the last date that's been booked right now. And I do have to catch up on some of these writing projects Um, and be a little bit more disciplined on um, getting up and and just writing. I've been been disciplined with meditating. And I'm, I'm like, grasp at. But another thing is just, like, being nice to yourself. We just went through a fucking pandemic. <laughs> Everybody's just like, I haven't hung out mob deep last night. Um, I should take a COVID test I'm here eventually. But I didn't hang out like super, super mob deep. Hung out kind of. Um, like, I guess hanging out is like hanging out after the show for a while. <laughs> um. But I can definitely say I was probably one of the older cats there. It was definitely kind of a younger scene. But that's all right by me. Um, this coffee. Oh, I'm drinking. It's the last bit. Man, I had this. I made this huge thing. But I did clean up and I was like beat up. But cleaning up makes me feel better. Like I love making my bed. I love organizing all my shit in the morning, even no matter how crazy it is. Um, I really think like the, like your area, your external and your internal, you're trying to find that balance at all times. So it helps you like get on top of the day by just organizing your immediate area or letting it go. But also that's what (laughs) you got. to Perfectionism is something you got to worry about, but not too much. Um, if you're smoking weed, you'll you'll never get it. <laughs> or you will. Or you'll just let it all go. Um, which is definitely the super key. I got two glasses of seltzer water over there, and I'm just staring at them. <laughs> I kind of got, a, I guess, a little bit of a hangover. Um, not bad. Like, immediately... When I woke up, I grabbed, I'm doing like two shots of uh, apple cider vinegar in a glass of water. I don't know what it is. It's just this alive, you know, apple cider, part alive, part fruit, part dead organism that is, uh, they say is great for you. And I have to say it, it definitely aligned my system up i would recommend it um one shot of apple cider vinegar and a glass of water mix that up that's the first thing i drank before and then now i've been doing a whole thing of uh chemex coffee which isn't that much um like i you know when i first did this podcast i was doing two big um french presses (sighs) 
Oh, wow. That is some good seltzer. Um, followed by a little bit. It's just the, it's the very, this is, I got this Atlas um, Coffee Club for Christmas from my brother-in-law. Shout out, Kevin. I love you. Um, this coffee is from India. Um, and it's absolutely amazing. I actually had two, I won't tell you, I had a bag of Stumptown and then I had a bag of this Atlas Coffee Club. Um, and I just took a smell this morning to pick out which one. And I have to say, I went with the Atlas India. Um, it has a great, great earth tone. Uh, and the Stumptown's amazing and it's like got this funk. But this has this like, I don't know, it's like very soulful. Okay, the fragrant seeds. This okay, this is this is from the Atlas. This is India. India. Coffee from the Atlas Coffee Club. Like I've I haven't had coffee, that much coffee from India. It's mostly from South America. Fragrant seed crackle in oil. Sputtering rickshaws squeeze through dense crowd. Bengal tigers stalk the Himalaya foothills. And ribbon-like clouds swirl over Dangering, vast terraced tea plantations. You've arrived in India, the world's most populous democracy, a spiritual center ruled by colors, chaos, and connection aromic draws you into mumbai's maze-like bazaars bursting with sari silk mango leaves coconut and chat you trace a spidery network of lagoons in kerali's backwaters past roaming wild elephants in woven houseboats on the historic streets of Agra, home of both Taj Mahal and one of the biggest holly festivals, you've dusted with powdery dubs of electric teal and marigold yellow. In a whirlwind of energy, you pause. You laze in the sun of golden gala beaches and you end for now near the beginning because in india there is no end the majestic virupakasha temple towers high above you in the tumbling boulders of rest red ruins of hampi stretch for miles relics of a 2300 year old city slowly overgrown with dynamic new life. Whoa. India. But it said nothing about the coffee. <laughs> I thought it was going to give me a breakdown. It just kind of broke down the country. But uh, the coffee's great. Um, I guess it's from India. Mm. It's very good. It's at the tail end. It's a great medium roast. And I like I said, it, the fragrance was just like this good. You know, it's just like these stream, extreme fragrances, especially in cannabis. Like, I will have to say I still am leaning towards homegrown. I'm getting a lot of different varieties and stuff. And I'm passing on um, indoor as much, a lot more. But New York hasn't like grasp the concept yet but i think it slowly will because it's just becoming um this new amsterdam that's happening um and right now bike it really is becoming amsterdam <laughs> uh coffee and weed eventually they'll have to get cafes i mean that's you know what i've been preaching about for years and years and years but all this stuff is starting to happen and open up um, but I still love Amsterdam. I hope to be out there. And, but there's a little Amsterdam in everywhere. Um, as long as there's coffee and there's herb. 
I've been listening to um, some music. I've been playing my guitar a little bit. I've been stretching a lot. I've been doing my five Tibetan rites. There are these uh, Tibetan stretches that uh, have definitely been helping me. But I've been doing, uh, I got a pull-up bar. So I've been doing, not pull-ups, but trying to do one-minute hangs. And I got it up to like three sets of one-minute hangs. And then one day it hurt really bad. So I got it down to 30. Like, you know, you fall off. I kind of ebb and flow. But you got to go with the ebb and flow. If you... (laughs) If you call it falling off, you kind of just have to, you know, learn every day. That's what I've been, like, whatever works for you, like, right now, do that to the uh, full extreme. Um, I'm just going, uh, check out the my YouTube channel. It has all my music videos, but also uh, check out. Uh, the Cannabis Coffee Hour. That's the one everybody that hears this voice needs to go and subscribe. That's how I'm going to keep it alive and well and flowing and going. Because um, that's the one that keep on keeps on going up. Um, yeah, shout out to Nems. He did a, uh, a video with Ghostface Killer um, just re- recently. And he has a podcast. I should reach out to that cat. But I didn't want to, you know, say, yo, I saw you on the internet. Um, and it was packed and everybody was stoned. And like the, the backstage, you know, it's kind of this, it was like this raw space um, that's above the store, you know. But it's big and then they had a bunch of chairs, so that worked. Um, they must be doing events and speakers and whatnot. Um, there's a little bathroom, there's a bar area. It's dope. It definitely worked, uh, but they might—they sold out of tickets. Like they might have to take it somewhere bigger. I bet you that's what they're thinking. Um, because there was times where I was like, if something did pop off, this is not a good space. Because it was raining and everybody's crowded up in there. I still wear my mask. Like I duck in and out, kind of. Um, I was trying to check out. What kind of music am I listening to? Yeah, a lot of Grateful Dead. Some Reiki music. Some uh, Bob Marley. I've been pumping a lot of reggae. I've been making some dub uh, reggae beats. Well, I'll, I'll have that as much. This I'll put as much into that, into this podcast that we're doing right here, right now. But yeah, you just can't beat Walk the Proud Earth, My Friend by Bob Marley. Pump that. Then the Buddha's, uh, the Buddha's flute. There's this Buddha flute music I've been playing. Oh, man. And I've been playing some David Crosby. R.I.P. David Crosby. As a stoner, like, no, but as a musician, dude, I mean, one of my favorite songs is Southern Cross by Crosby, Stills, and Nash. That's a great tune. And then that whole Deja Vu album, as a, in terms of acoustic rock, in terms of, like, you can't beat that shit. That shit is fucking fire in the mountain. Fire on the mountain. Great jam by the Grateful Dead. One of my favorites. Um, I like the show Two Minutes to Late Night. They do a sh- they tape this thing over in Brooklyn at this uh, metal venue that I've been to a few times. Um, I saw, what was that band? Well, I saw my Nate man from Lion Eyes, my, my friend, uh, Nate Bergman, who did, has done this podcast. He opened for, I remember going there. St. Vitus, if I think it is. They do a show over there. Shout out to those dudes. Um, let's see here. Van Halen, I've been listening to some Van Halen, been listening to some Grateful Dead, been listening to uh, some hip hop, some Rancid, um, yeah, that's kind of the kind of the vibe I've been doing, um, and just trying to live every moment at the moment, I haven't been fiending for a little bit more coffee, um, but I'm trying to equal out, you know, my vibe. 
in terms of I don't want to get too like jacked up but today I kind of went out last night like I haven't been going out crazy crazy so um today I am kind of like whoa and then I was like I gotta deal with the podcast man I gotta get okay I'll talk about cookies in New York I'll talk about oh shout out to the Arlington Draft House man I had a best time thank you everybody that came out Uh, my friend Doug E came out I don't want to give out people's government names out on there. So, but if you're listening to, everybody said they would subscribe. Big Al, uh, all my friends like from my early 20s came out to the show. It was kind of a little bit pressure, um, but we had a fun show. I got a tons of laugh. I haven't been um, headlining that much, like doing over an hour of material. Um, I was doing about 55 minutes. Like, I, I never try to go over with stand-up. A lot of these comedians do, like, 10 hours. I have I have gone on and on. I would say probably the longest I've done is probably, like, 90 minutes. I've definitely done 90 minutes, but it didn't feel that great. <laughs> I definitely have done over an hour a bunch, and that's 60 minutes. Um, Yeah, I've been... I've done... Yeah... I haven't done like two hours or three hours, um, but I, I'm sure you can if the audience is like still with you. And that's the thing about celebrity and and all that. Like when the crowd is with you on that, I kind of like where I'm at. The crowd doesn't know me and I can go in and out of all these different scenes and I know all these different people. Like I think all these pieces are coming to, I know the pieces fit. I mean, it's just fun hanging out with different types of people all the time. That's the thing about New York. Like, you just had, there's all these different crews and new universes. And the lesson I always learn is like, stay humble. Like, there's just so many people out there, and there's so many talented people, and there's so many nice people. Everybody's got a rough skin right now. Like, I've been walking really soft. Um, people are on edge, man. Um, and that's what's nice about doing these cannabis shows is like it's totally totally super chill um which is definitely the vibe I- i'm heading towards <laughs> i've been making like i said i've been making uh reggae dub beats um playing a lot of reggae i've been rastafari there's like this one record oh cherry my baby oh man um It's the Rolling Stones did this one reggae song. Now the Rolling Stones has this have this connection to Jamaica because Keith Richards had a house there and then he produced an album there um, called The Wingless Angels. And they um, so they always were like a fan of reggae. Even Grateful Dead, I was watching. There's a great YouTube of Jerry Garcia doing stir stirred up. Um. And he's only play, he only played it three, but he talked about Bob Marley and reggae and how it was like like a great. All those guys listen to reggae. Reggae, people think it it's either too slow or whatnot, but it's like a different tempo, and it's definitely a cool like everything is like tempo and rhythm. With music, it's like tone, tempo, rhythm. It's energy, you know. And you can play with that energy anywhere, you you know, it's like food. Like you can play with the food and make it all kinds of different things and it can take you all different kinds of types of places. Maybe I've had too much weed or maybe I haven't had enough weed. <laughs> That's always the ever ending uh, question. Have I had too much weed or have I had not enough weed? And you're always kind of like running around. I know whenever I'm out in California, um, which I haven't been since the pandemic, man, I need to get out to California soon. Um, We're still opening up, you know, going down to D.C. again. Shout out to the Arlington Draft House. Shout out to everybody that came out. Um, That's that last show. I only did two shows, but the second show, they were both fun and both unique. Um yeah, staying in, I didn't realize that in the Arlington Cemetery, uh, John F. Kennedy was buried over there. I was like, shit, man, JFK's body's right over there. 
It's like this theater that's like right next to the Arlington Cemetery. It's wild. Um, DC is a wild place, man. Um, it was good because it was like Martin Luther King weekend, but I didn't get to. I didn't work on the weekend part, the Sunday part. And I was in D.C. It just seemed respectful. Um, I just dug it, man. It was good to be back. That's where I was born. So it was good back to be back and see all these people. Um, but I was also working. And I was also in and out. Like, I drove down there and I drove back. Um, but I have to say, 95 was really, like... I guess it's, like, right after the holidays... That's what's weird about this gig and like, you know, it was like right after the holidays, but the highways were wide open. So um, I just, I remember I got back, like once I got out of Baltimore, it's kind of smooth sailing right to New York if, well, at least to Brooklyn. Like now I'm going over Staten Island. So I've learned how to drive through Staten Island and kind of come up from dc and it's like boom, you're right here um there is a connection between all these like little east coast cities i hope to be to boston soon i haven't been i haven't spent that much time up there i don't know about going up there now man buff shout out to buffalo man i know it's just like i haven't been following football i know a lot of football uh, shout out to carmen christopher who was on the last podcast we talked i played football maybe that's why i can't remember shit uh no i can't remember shit but you know i people blame it on weed like rob you smoke too much weed i'm like maybe i just played too much football but i didn't play that much i played in the eighth grade in the ninth eighth through senior year so i played four or five years of football um hmm and I never really loved it that much. I did it mostly just to hang out. Um, but it was fun. Like we talked about it on the last podcast. But I don't know why. I got on it because I, I was talking about Buffalo. And I know there were some big gov- games. And I know a lot of stoners are Bills fans. <laughs> yeah, The Bills definitely have a lot of stoners. Um, Buffalo, anywhere where it's like extreme cold, like you can definitely know that cannabis is around there somewhere um canada canada's always been stonerville man those guys are super stoners um not all of them but even the ones that (laughs) don't smoke pot seem stoned um that seems bad um canada's nice um and great people um and great weed vancouver always was known as a stoner weed place <clears throat> and I think Toronto was. <clears throat> and then kind of their country. Like people in the backwoods definitely smoked a lot of herb. Shout out to the Trailer Park Boys. I mean, that show was tons of herb. I love that show. Hold on and hit this bowl real quick. Yeah, just for the last bit (laughs) of the podcast. The Cannabis Coffee Hour. I drank all the coffee. That was the rest of the bowl. We talked about the gigs in D.C. and New York. Uh, They've been great. Please sign up to my mailing list on robcantrail.com. I can't wait to bring this show out on the road. Um, I'm looking uh, for booking uh, the Cannabis Coffee Hour to festivals coming up so please get at me at contact at rob cantrell if you're serious about your business and want to connect um because there's gonna i think there's just gonna be a lot more cannabis type shows and i'm definitely good for that crowd and i kind of know what to expect (laughs) and uh and i have some material for it i was all over the map last night but so was everything like um I had to go up first, so I was like, the vibe wasn't set up, but um, but I had a great time. It was a fun set. Um, I'm glad I did it. I hope to do more shows with those cats. Uh, 
but definitely I popped off. Like uh, I definitely am I'm feeling a little tired today. I hope it doesn't come through too much on this podcast. Uh, been drinking smoothies. Um, uh, what have I been eating? Been, I had some salmon last night and then I've been eating mashed potatoes. I'm going through a mashed potato phase. <laughs> I got like, I went to Costco and I had, I got like a case of like instant mashed potatoes. And I was like, yo man, anytime I'm hungry, I just pour some. But the first time I made them, it was disgusting. I don't know. They were butter flavored and I don't know. I did something weird. I don't know. I, I did, I, but I think I learned it's like water to, it's a lot like the coffee that uh, through the Chemex, like there is a dance. There's a dance in subtlety to everything in life is what I'm learning. And the more that you be, you're quiet and chill and relaxed, the more you can enjoy and um, kind of let things happen. And I think that's where like a lot of my tension is, is like stand up is exactly not that. <laughs> stand up, you got to have some jokes, you got to like, but you learn to like let go up on stage and kind of let things happen and talk things through. But it's also, you know, such a weird time with all the PC culture and, you know, I worry about uh, cancellation and all that stuff. And, and um, you know, you have to be kind of mindful exactly where you're at. But if your heart is good and your head is good, um, you kind of just, like, flow on. <laughs> and if you're, you're yourself, I think it's like grabbing for attention or anything like that. You got to, like, just, you know, lately I'm just, like, trying to focus on the work and, and you know I'm definitely proud of this podcast I want to keep on doing this I want to keep on drinking some more weed and <laughs> I mean drinking some more coffee and smoking some more weed and talking to some more comics and uh playing some more music and making some more beats um because I'm having a blast doing it and I'm glad you guys are all checking it out uh, I'm seeing the numbers go up and you know it's just like it's always kind of this thing just to kind of, it's almost like doing a personal journal sometimes for me. Uh, and just kind of keeping a record on where I'm at and my vibe on herb and cannabis. And I listen to these too. Like I go back and like, oh, maybe I'm a little too weeded out, you know, maybe, I, or what's this negative tinge I'm going through? Um, so now it's kind of like, you know, I keep it going. Uh, and you keep it going, and uh, and we'll meet together in the middle someday ahead in the future at a cannabis coffee hour, um, coffee um, shop and hangout spot. Um, that's where it's all heading. That's where I want to go, and with the production, I just had it's just carving out the time uh, to put it all together, and everybody kind of sees their own vision with all these podcasts. But a lot of it's just the setup and the execution. But it being able to do it consistently, and that's what's nice about kind of the uh, DIY uh, aspect of this podcast. Like it pretty much just comes down to talking about cannabis and coffee. I love coffee. Uh, I had a one full pot of it today. That's where I'm at. Maybe I'll have like another mini cup today. Maybe I'll switch over to tea. I got the, all these tea bags. I got chai tea and shit. Uh, I love talking about morning routines. Today I tried to do a 20 minute meditation. I made it to 12, but right at, it's always like when I think I got it, like I give up. It's weird. Uh, but I'm learning it and my back is getting straighter and more, my posture is getting better and I'm learning how to like sit back in myself and be myself more, even in, in like last night with these shows, it's like, you know, it's a hundred people packed smoking weed out in Times Square during a lightning storm and it's about 37 degrees outside. So there's a lot of elements and factors and I gotta perform, I'm going on first. <laughs> so there's a lot of elements and factors. So what I'm learning is being balanced, but I like the cannabis, you know. I think cannabis sometimes throws you off a little bit um, from being centered and balanced. 
but sometimes it puts you right there. You know, a lot of it's, you know, just learning as we go ahead with uh, your own tolerance and your tolerance and our tolerance and the society's t- tolerance. The tolerance is coming on to the cannabis side. That's what's so wild. And, um, but there will be potholes pothole- ahead. <laughs> But we got to get up and over. Um, you know, putting this together every week, you know, it's still... Every day I wake up, I got to be like... But what gets me grounded, it's like, I just got to deal with what's directly in front of me, you know? And what, how the best way to handle that is clearing your mind to all together. And if you can't get it, just get grateful for the moment. And then you start to look around and boom. boom. Um, and I feel like everybody's kind of like learning how to do this together. But uh, yeah, I love you guys. Thanks for listening. And uh, I'll be back next week. Peace. Love. I'm out.